army eliminates many terrorists from ISIS and al-Nusra and persists in striking their stronghold in Jisra Shawur. Nasrallah asserts integrity of battle against terrorism, emphasizing readiness to contribute in achieving victory in Syria alongside the Syrian Arab army. Demonstrations in Ankara in condemnation of Erdogan's internal and foreign policies and his support to terrorism. Good afternoon. ISIS committed a horrific massacre against the people of Palmyra city, killing hundreds, mostly children, women and elderly, under takfiri pretexts and justifications that contradict with all human values and principles. Local sources from within the city of Palmyra reported that ISIS terrorists massacred more than 400 people, mostly children, women and elders, and mutilated their bodies, noting that among the victims were head of the nursing department at the National Hospital and all members of her family. The source has pointed out that the Tekfiris organization prevents thousands of civilians from leaving the city, confiscates their properties, and imposes the Tekfir ideology that is contrary to all divine and international law. In Homs, northern countryside, Syrian Arab army units have destroyed Nusra terrorist gatherings and dens. Other army units have clashed with terrorists who have attempted to infiltrate from Al Ghajar village to Kafarnan orchards along Jabourin village west of Tadbisa town, killing a number of them and destroying their arms and ammunition. In the last countryside, Syrian Arab army units destroyed several hideouts of al-Nusra Front, killing many of them and destroying a vehicle with all terrorists inside after monitoring their movement in the town of Al-Kirk. Also, military operations had resulted in the killing of a number of terrorists and the destruction of their machine gun equipped vehicles in many towns. Syrian Arab army also conducted a focused operation yesterday on a terrorist hotbed east of Al-Wahda school in Dara al-Balad, killing many terrorists and injuring others. Syrian Arab army units continued their advance in Deir Zor and maintained control over a number of sites in the environs of Deir Zor military airport, killing dozens of ISIS terrorists and injuring others. Secretary General of Hezbollah, Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah, said that history is repeating itself under new names and slogans, with a takfiri threat currently endangering the state and people of the region, stressing that this threat is unprecedented in human history and it targets human existence. In a speech on the occasion of celebrating the anniversary of Resistance and Liberation Day, Nasrallah praised Syria's leadership and people and all those who assisted and supported the resistance and helped it it achieved victory. He said that the battle of Al-Kalamun is ongoing and will continue until the Syrian Arab Army, Popular Defense Forces and the Lebanese resistance are able to secure all the Syrian-Lebanese borders. Nasrallah affirmed that the Syrian Arab Army, Popular Resistance and Public Support allowed Syria to persevere in the face of the universal war targeting it. He noted that the biggest danger when it comes to the Takfiri plot is that some are trying to separate the battles taking place in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon Lebanon and Egypt, saying that the most prominent example of the Takfiri plot on the ground is ISIS, which murders, destroys, rapes and enslaves people, pointing out that its most recent atrocity is the massacre it committed in Palmyra that claimed the lives of hundreds of innocent civilians, most of whom were women, children and elderly. Hezbollah Secretary General said that the Lebanese resistance is capable of contributing to the efforts of the Syrian army and people in order to achieve victory against the Takfiri plot. He also asserted that there is no such thing as Al-Fatah army, explaining that what is being referred to as that is merely a Nusra front, which is Al-Qaeda's offshoot in the Levant. Nasrallah said that there are some in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq and elsewhere in the region who are burying their heads in the sand and claim that there is no threat, while others are standing aside and the third group is assisting and betting on terrorist groups, considering them a friend, an ally and a savior, similar to those who supported Israel in 1982. Locals of Iskenderun have taken to the streets in the city of Antioch 
to denounce Erdogan's government supporting and training the terrorists who are perpetrating heinous massacres against the Syrian people. They also condemned Erdogan's government's backing of the so-called moderate opposition as a cover to train and support terrorists. The demonstrators raised Syrian flags and pictures of President Bashar al-Assad and shouted slogans voicing support to the Syrian people and denouncing Erdogan and his government, calling him a dictator. Erdogan's police have tried to disperse the pro protesters by installing military checkpoints. It is to be noted that Turkish Foreign Minister Mawlud Jawish has reiterated early this month that Turkey and the U.S. would continue to train and back the terrorist organizations in Syria under the pretext of moderate opposition, adding that about 2,000 terrorists would be trained starting May 9th of this year. Iraqi army and popular mobilization forces backed by tribes fighters have managed to achieve a significant progress east of El Ramadi within the military plan to free El Ramadi from ISIS terrorists. Iraqi sources have indicated that Iraqi troops have moved forward toward Al Sura area and the edges of Al Sufiya and Al Zira areas. Moreover, Iraqi Minister of Defense has said that Iraqi military aircrafts have destroyed ISIS terrorist gatherings and targeted a terrorist group that was trying to plant explosive devices in Haith, west of Al Ambar. In response to Saudi aggression on Yemen, Yemeni sources announced that Yemeni army and tribesmen have bombarded Saudi Najran leadership forces camp. On the other hand, eight Yemeni people were killed and 12 were injured due to Al-Saud raids on several Yemeni governorates, which destroyed a number of buildings and the main part of the archaeological castle of Bajil. Moreover, the Yemeni army has eliminated members of Al-Qaeda in Al-Hamra and Al-Majhafa areas in Lahij province south of Yemen. However, the Yemeni defense forces have shut down yesterday evening a second war plane of al Saud regime in Sa'da province after a few hours of downing a Saudi plane in the capital, Sana'a. The final stage of Jerusalem 27 maneuvers of the Iranian army began in Nasr Abad in Asfahan. One of the maneuvers officials said that the infantry units, armored vehicles and the artillery in addition to the special forces, air forces and the Iranian army participated in these maneuvers, noting that the Education of Jerusalem maneuvers take place once a year. Furthermore, the first stage of these maneuvers were held in Kerman Shah district last Thursday as air defense units have shut down drones of the supposed enemy. With this, we conclude our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to date is in business and market news with Razan, but after a short break. Good afternoon. The second phase of the public intervention sessions to support the Syrian pound is to start today by the Syrian expatriates within the Syrian Phoenix, which has been recently launched. Co-organizer of the campaign, Nisreen Zareq, said that launching the second phase of intervention sessions for supporting the Syrian pound comes in conjunction with celebration of resistance and liberative liberation day to emphasize that Syria is home for resistance and steadfastness. She added that campaign consists of seven sessions with an upward course, pointing out that the first phase is to buy the Syrian pounds from the international markets in order to increase their value internationally. She also said that 25 businessmen and businesswomen abroad joined the campaign, noting that the number of participants become 374 expatriates so far. The second public campaign concentrates on supporting the national com commodities in addition to exportation with the expatriates purchasing the national commodities and pumping them in the international markets, providing that they are paid for through foreign currencies. Tourism Minister called for developing observation work in the touristic facilities during the season. Minister held a meeting with touristic directories as he asserted the importance of boosting the observation performance in the touristic governorates and setting the training courses. He also called for presenting several services at affordable prices and achieving 
and activating beaches and camps as well as boosting investors to implement their facilities. Modern and very chic clothes for modern girls. We are talking about the Syrian casuals. Let's take a look. Fashion in Syria is very stylish. The Syrian girls are very picky, so it's hard to satisfy their tasteful fashion. This high quality fashion is really desirable for everybody around the world, not only the Syrians. The Syrian fashion is really famous around the world and we sell it to all the countries. With the different colors and fabrics, you will find many modern designs that could be part of the international casual fashion. The Serum Fashion Factories are always busy of exporting these kinds of fashion to all the neighbor countries and to the other continents. Aiming at defining its abilities in getting over monopoly and strengthening the competition culture in supporting the national economy, General Authority for Competition held a symposium for media figures to show the authority's role in confronting monopoly. Authority's General Director talked about its role in dealing with national economy's situation, clarifying that only through positive interference establishments we can get rid of monopoly, whereas Director of the Economic Censorship in the Authority said that prices ought to be very close to the real cost, as violators must be questioned. Iranian Petroleum Minister ruled out that OPEC might change its production ceiling when it holds its meeting scheduled in June, showing that reducing the production ceiling for OPEC requires consensus among all members, so it is unlikely to be changed during these circumstances. And now over to some main currencies exchange rates, according to the Bulletin of the Central Bank of Syria. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching and goodbye.